Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the Visual Effects Society is proud to honor Dennis Muren with a Lifetime Achievement Award. And to present this is the filmmaker who has been associated with him since his earliest days in visual effects for more than 30 years. Please welcome director George Lucas. Well, it's always a great pleasure to be here. Um, I love uh, to watch this organization grow. Um, it's always amazing to me. I mean, those of us sitting around the table, the old ones like Dennis and I, um, and a few others that work at Island. You know, in the 30 years we've been here where this thing started, where there really was no special effects industry. I mean, there was no visual effects industry. It was a special effects industry, and it sort of included a whole bunch of people, but there just was no industry. And now to watch all these people and all these great movies and television shows and everything that's ma magnificent effects, it's just stunning and wonderful and exciting to be here. And, and um, I'm always especially impressed with the fact that there's a few people who are my age, that are still managed to stay alive in this business and still be able to come up here and be coherent. <laughs> so there's hope for those of you who think you're never going to make it. I mean, through life with your brain intact. But um, I'm here to, to, uh, to uh, introduce a person who um, is an amazing talent, who I've known for a very long time, who started out working nights at ILM, uh, and I would come in in the middle of the night and he'd be working away, uh, shooting shots, and um, in those days it wasn't very exciting at all. It was uh, you know, on a camera that sometimes worked and sometimes didn't. I know things have changed now and everything works perfectly. <laughs> but um, uh, we would always have a good laugh and a cup of coffee at two in the morning, and um, he has gone on to become a stalwart at ILM and one of the, you know, the, the center figures of uh, uh, an, an outstanding organization that, even though I get a lot of credit for it, I really had not much to do with it. You know, it's really the people that worked at ILM and I know there's more than a few of you here tonight and I'd like to thank all of you uh, for your help in making that organization work, and uh, especially for Dennis, who is truly the heart and soul of that organization. And um, other than that, he's going to get, everybody's going to talk about all the great things he does creatively, and we all know that. But the one thing that's the most important about Dennis is that he is a really great human being. He is just the most terrific guy you'd ever want to meet in your life. I have never seen him yell at anybody in a business where people are prone to yelling. Uh, he uh, inspires uh, without uh, really pushing too hard, uh, and um, he's always been a kind, decent person to everybody who's been around him, and to me that's his greatest achievement. So Dennis, come on up here. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you all very much. I, uh, I share with George the fact that I just cannot believe what this industry's turned into. I was thinking about how uh, 
there was a little place across the universe from Universal that uh, like an old uh, Adobe building where some of us would meet and show our special effects movies. This is in the 60s and maybe 15 people would show up. And that was about it. That building's long gone, of course. Um, and look at this. I mean, the culture wanted to see the work we did and here we are and it's just, uh, it's pretty phenomenal. I really uh, appreciate this and I'm very humbled by it and honored uh, by the award. And I'm gonna give a big thanks to George. Without George, where would we all be? You know? And a special thought, uh, special thanks to my family, and cousins, and my wife Zara's here, and my kids at home are so important. Uh, and uh, to the supervisors I've worked with in the past and working with in the present, I can't say all of you are all around here, you guys are great, and we make a great team, and ILM in general, what an organization. Uh, I've been there for 32 years, plan to be there for 32 more years. And um, the workmates, so many of them I've had around here that are here tonight and elsewhere that have gone on to start other companies, work at other companies, it's just, uh, I feel really honored and a little bit of me is gone with you there and I'm just so glad we've all been able to uh, enjoy doing what we love to do. Um, now I don't know why, I, I'm gonna talk for a little bit here, not too long, maybe three or four minutes. Uh, one of the things I can remember when I was really young um, was going up to Yosemite. And at Yosemite, we'd stay at Camp Curry in the summertime. And at night, at nine o'clock at night, everybody would sort of gather around. And they would be looking at, uh, at, I think it's called Glacier Point up there. And you'd hear a voice on top of Glacier Point say, Camp Curry, hello Camp Curry. And then someone, a ranger down below, that's 3,000 feet up, ranger down below would say, let the fire fall. And at nighttime, here we are, falling 3,000 feet, is this fire falling down. And what it was, was, was uh, it was bark from, I think, red fir trees that a ranger would knock down over the side. <clears throat> and, I, and I was like six or seven, and it was just an amazing thing to see, be in a real, this beautiful natural setting, and have this phenomenon happen there, like a, a waterfall on fire. And that's actually similar to some of the stuff that the, the directors ask us to do, these crazy oxymorons. And I think that had just a major effect on me, uh, seeing that, and I've never forgotten the, just the magic of that evening and the, the few times I did see that. They don't allow it anymore. They stopped it in the, I think in the late 60s or so. Um, anyway, I, I always think, I think what we ought to do, because all of us are here and we like the work we do, one of the things that I try to do is, and most of the folks that, that uh, work at ILM, is to really push the envelope, and I really believe in that. You wanna, you wanna take what you sort of think you can do and see if you can top it, if you can plus that out and do something better than the director is expecting, better than you're expecting, still within budget. And, of course, and I think that, I think you can really do it. I think what you have to do is to keep thinking about it. If, if you, in other words, don't just go over and try to think, well, I've tried this, and I don't know how we're gonna do it. Usually, if you just keep thinking a little bit longer, maybe five more seconds, you might figure out some interesting combination, the way we used to in the old days of, you know, cameras and film and mirrors and stuff like that, there are often clever ways of putting them together and there are clever ways now that you can make an image that looks new and fresh like no one's ever seen it. But it's just sort of a reorganization of how we do it and I really try to do that and I try to, uh, to have the work be, uh, you know, fresh and new and whenever I finish a show, I just assume it's obsolete and I've got to like figure out what we're going to do for the next thing and it's important not to sort of rest on your rest on your laurels, so to speak. Uh, over the years, I've grown um, through Star Wars primarily to embrace, actually, technology, which I was sort of fearful of at first, but when, when John Dykstra hired me, and thanks, John, to do the motion control stuff on Star Wars, I came to realize the power of technology when it is used for the artist and when the artist can actually use it. And I think what artists need to do is also get in there and design the stuff and get behind it and make it work for them. Uh, John's here, who he and his brother did Photoshop, an easy to use program, and it, that virtually has changed the world, and if it was not easy to use, and there were other ones that came out afterwards that were not easy to use, they just disappear. So it's important to fight that fight and be a partner with technology and, and make it work for the betterment of the films and for the betterment of the audiences also. Everything we do is for the audiences and for the directors, and I really believe that. Uh, 
at the moment, I've been working on this same thing at, at ILM, working on the technology. We're still trying to uh, keep that and get that easier to use so it's more real time, so that it's more impulsive. It's not as like waiting around, but when you get an idea to something, you can try it and get immediate feedback. And that's really the future. I know a lot of other folks are working on it, and I'm looking forward to, to that happening. I've been doing some work at Pixar, where we're trying to uh, sort of do a dramatic synthesis kind of of effects and animation, and it's a real interesting thing. I think the technology is getting to the point where things can happen that you really haven't seen before there. That's pretty neat. And the last thing I'm doing at the moment, I'm taking a, sort of a year doing this other stuff, is, uh, is writing a book for CG artists. And it's, oh thanks, thanks. And it's on observation, and it's on observation skills and learning how to observe things around you that you can then apply to your work. Because once you, because what you gotta do is we're making these for the audience and if the audience can understand what they're looking at and believe in it, it has a power just extremely uh, powerful, you know, if it's in a good movie. So uh, that should be coming maybe in a year or so. So anyway, again, thanks to everybody at ILM especially, the VES, all you folks here, I really appreciate it, my wife and my kids, and I love you all, and who would have ever guessed? Who would have thought? Okay. Thanks so much. Oh, they want, okay, okay. okay.